I thank the gentleman for yielding time to me. There's a great Chinese scholar, Professor Sherendon, wrote a book called China and Disintegration. And he analyzed the fall of, of China's government in the early 1900s before you moved to kind of an anarchical situation where you saw the rise of Chiang Kai-shek and the Kuomintang versus ultimately post-World War II, Mao Zedong and the, and the Chinese communists long marched as they marched around and eventually uh, the U.S. wavered and China's, uh, China fell to communism under Chairman Mao. Well, so what was the premise of China in disintegration? It was an analysis of why great powers, great nations, great empires fail. They fail because of the a loss of geographical integrity. They fail for, that's the first thing. The second thing is they fail because their currency loses value and trust. Once that goes, and the culture begins to change. They're either overextended or they allow individuals with malevolent intentions to come into their country and influence the population. So what do we have? We have a wide open border. So we've lost our geographical integrity. We have $31.4 trillion in national debt and rising inflation. We have nations like India contemplating moving to the Chinese Yuan for their currency of exchange instead of the dollar, and they've settled on the rupee. So we've lost economic integrity as well. So what has happened? Well, China views, as they always have themselves, that's why it's chugoku, chu, meaning the center. They view them as the center of the universe. They have viewed Westerners as barbarians. And Mao and his ambitions were superseded ultimately by Deng Xiaoping, who said, we're going to put a unique spin and have a hybridized economy. And it's going to have some elements of capitalism, but it's going to be communistic overall. Now, why did he do that? because they were failing as a communist state. And we built, we built the Chinese middle class. We built the Chinese deep water navy. We gave China t uh, a superior telemetry. Ladies and gentlemen, we have basically given China uh, our technology, what we haven't given them, they've stolen. So now you've reached a point where you have, you have a CEO of a company like Nike who says, we're not an American country, a company anymore. We're a Chinese company. Now, how have they done that? There are literally tens of thousands of Chinese national students in our universities. We have, so when we talk about the billions of dollars that have come in, in donations, a more insidious thing is the, is the out-of-state tuition that funds these state universities who rely on out-of-state tuition. And so they come in and they pay that tuition. And these are not it's not a, a, no, a normalized situation. To come over here as a student, you have to be a member of the CCP. There are 330 million people in the CCP, as many as we have living in the United States today. And they send their students over here, and they exit. They leave, and they go home with what? Our technology and experience that we've given them to defeat ourselves. We can continue to put our head in the sand and hope that it isn't true. There are those who believe it's xenophobic to talk about this. 
But I appreciate the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bean, being here tonight and leading this special order because Americans need to know the peril that we are in, because China doesn't view us as an economic opponent or competitor. They view us as an adversary, a geopolitical adversary. And for them, they want to be the world's dominant hegemon. That isn't me saying it. You can look at any modern writing within the top leadership of the CCP. It's pretty clear. And I would suggest that we need to take back our educational institutions, couple that with the, the integration. We need to decouple our in economic integration and depend dependence upon China. They know we're dependent. They know they can exploit that. We saw how they exploited it just recently in the COVID-19 epidemic. Let's be wise. We're going to have to take action. With that, I yield back to the gentleman. I thank you. Thank you, Mr.